Good morning. Conservative and non-conservative forces. This is uh, the topic of today's discussion. In the last class, which was posted uh, just yesterday, uh, there I have discussed uh, gravitational potential energy. And during the discussion of this thing, that is a uh, gravitational potential energy, one term was used uh, that is conservative force. Okay. Now, in this lecture, I am going to discuss about conservative as well as non-conservative forces. Yes, there is a difference. All the forces uh, cause acceleration. Okay, if there is some resultant force, it must cause some acceleration according to Newton's second law of motion. You know this thing. But uh, there is a difference between these two types of forces. Okay. And after uh, knowing this thing, what is conservative force, what is non-conservative force, uh, we will reach to some important conclusion. Okay. And that thing will be discussed in the next video. So here we are talking about conservative as well as non-conservative forces. So to start with this topic, let us first consider three types of forces. First is spring force. Okay. Suppose uh, there is a flat surface, this is the flat surface, and say there is a one spring, this is spring, okay, somewhere tied here, and there, this is a block of mass M, okay, this is a block of mass M, and say this is the position 0, S equals 0, and say this is the position X is equal to plus D, and say this is the position where x is equal to minus d. Okay, so these are the three positions. Here x is equal to 0 means what? Means here the spring is in a relaxed condition. There is no external force being applied on the spring in this position. And here in this position, some external agent was there which compressed the spring up to this position. And at the end of the spring, you can see that there is a mass of M attached here this is the mass and the, here uh, the spring is assumed to be weightless that is uh, uh, compared to the weight of this block the spring is weightless negligibly small okay so suppose uh, after compression the uh, by using an external agent after compression the block reaches here now if you remove the force by which the spring was compressed what will happen? This block will start moving in this direction. Okay? In this direction. And say K is the spring constant. Okay? Then what will be the kinetic energy? Or what is the actually, what is the work done? If you remove the force. Okay? What will be the work done? You know that work done will be equal to plus half K D square. Okay, D means this distance, from here to here, this distance. When the block moves from this position to this position, means x is, x is equal to plus D to x is equal to 0. When the spring moves from this position to this position, or the block moves from this position to this position, this is the work done, and this will be equal to kinetic energy of the block. Okay, so here this work done is positive, because here the spring itself is doing work. The direction of the force and the direction of the displacements are same. Both are from right to left. Okay. Now, when the spring moves from x, x is equal to 0 up to x is equal to minus d, there is also some work done, but this work done is negative. Because here, when the uh, block passes the point x is equal to 0 towards left, in that case, the direction of the force reverses. That is from left to right. Okay. And here displacement is in the uh, is in this direction. That is from right to left. So they are opposite to each other. So work done will be negative. So that will be minus half kd square. Again, the block will move from x is equal to minus d to x equal to 0. And here similarly the work done will be positive. Right? And again, when is uh, it reaches from x is equal to 0 up to x is equal to plus d. In that case, the total work done will be minus half kd square. 
Now it completes a cycle from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here. Now this is a complete cycle and for this complete cyclic motion means the uh, starting point and the end points are same. Okay. So for this complete cycle, what is the total work done? You can see if you sum up all these four work done, you will get zero. Right? You will get zero. So total work done is zero. You can see for this case. So this was case number one. This was case number one. Now let us consider case number two. Case number two is uh, suppose from the ground, this is the ground you are throwing an object in the vertically upward direction so if you draw if you throw an object in the particular upward direction say mass of the object is m and it reaches up to this height say this height is h okay so you know that after reaching to this height the uh, object will have zero velocity and then the object will go in the downward direction ultimately it reaches to the ground so what is the work done in this case when it is going in the upward direction when it reaches the height h here h is the displacement okay in that case the work done what is the weight of the object it is mg weight of the object is mg okay here for this small height from this to this g is taken to be constant there is no change in g okay because it is we are considering the heights which are near the surface of the earth means this height h is very very small as compared to the radius of the earth okay so in that case uh, weight is mg right means weight remains constant from this point to this point weight remains constant and what is the displacement it is h what is the direction of the displacement it is upward what is the direction of the weight it is downward weight is acting in the downward direction so this work done will be negative because they are opposite to each other but when the object falls from this height up to the ground when it reaches the ground in that case the direction of displacement is this downward and the direction of the weight is also downward so work done will be positive so plus mgh right so what is so now it is a complete cycle it reaches from this point to this point and this point to this point so total this is a complete cycle and for this complete cycle the total work done is again zero right so this was case number two. Now uh, uh, consider case number three, right? So for case number three, we are taking uh, frictional force. Okay, you know that frictional force F is equal to mu into m. F is the frictional force, mu is the curve coefficient of friction, and n is the normal reaction. Suppose there is one. Uh, plate like this okay there is one plate like this and say at the center there is one rod and at the end of the rod there is one mass let me see whether the lowermost portion is visible or not yeah it is clearly visible there is no problem at all so yes uh, this is a rod and uh, say the weight of the rod is so small as compared to the weight of this object which is fixed at the end of this rod and say this raw, uh, this disc is rotating around this axis the axis is perpendicular to the perpendicular to the board perpendicular to the plane of the board is the axis okay so with respect to that this axis this uh, rectangular plate is rotating right so when it is rotating you know that due to the action of the centrifugal force this object M will uh, try to move in the outward direction, in the radially outward direction. It will try to move. Okay. So if F be the frictional force, if F be the frictional force, and say the displacement, say that initially, say initially the object was kept at the center, and just when the, uh, this rectangular plate starts rotating, okay, in that case the object moves from center to this distance up to this point the block moved or the object moved okay say this distance is d okay from center up to this is the distance d so what is the work done the work done will be f into d right 
if into t will be work done. But whether this work done is positive or negative, this work done must be negative because direction of frictional force is in the opposite direction of the motion of the object. Frictional force always tries to prevent the motion. So direction of frictional force and direction of displacement are opposite to each other. Since they are opposite to each other, so therefore work done will be negative. So at this location, work done is negative. Okay. Again, so disk is moving, moving. Okay. So when disk reaches here, somewhere here, okay, this way, so the object reaches here. Here also, the distance remains fixed. It is d. Again, what is the work done? It is minus f t. Again, minus f t. When the object reaches here, okay. Here also the work done is minus F D. Because in all the cases, uh, the direction of the frictional force and the direction of the displacements are opposite to each other. When the block reaches here, again it is negative, minus F D. So wherever be the block, if distance remains fixed, that is D, then in all the cases, work done are negative. Say ultimately the block reaches again here. Okay. Means here the starting point and the end point are same. Means it is a complete cycle. So you can see that if you sum up all these work done, it will not be a zero quantity. Okay. It will not be a zero quantity. There is a net negative quantity. Work done is there. So here the work done is non zero. So this way the two types of forces are uh, means. Difference is made in two types of forces. One force is there where after reaching to the initial point, okay, means starting point, the total work done becomes zero. And in another, another case, means in the third case, the total work done is not zero. The first case, the first case, in the first case, the force is called, called to be conservative in nature. Okay, means that force is called conservative force. Means here the spring force, here the weight or the gravitational pull or the gravitational force. Okay, gravitational force, here these two types of forces are conservative forces. And in the last case, the frictional force, this is non-conservative. Okay, why this distinction is being made, that will be discussed in another video. Okay, but there is distinction, you can clearly see this. There is distinction. Here, frictional force uh, means work done due to frictional force is always non-zero quantity. And in these cases, frictional uh, work done is zero only when starting point and the end points are same. Means if it is a complete cycle. Okay. So this is the end of this lecture. Okay. Thank you for watching this video. Have a nice day.